great love towards us. And I'm praising him on today because of the spirit of God that's blessing us right now for his word, which is engrafted word, which is able to save and to receive men's souls into the fullness of a place we call joy. And I thank God for the joy of the Lord on this day. It is our strength. And I just can't say that to everybody. I only can say it to a few, those that will believe and at the same time receive what God has been speaking to them, just like he's speaking to me. And I have to share it with you, beloved, because God gave it to me to speak it to you right now. Father, I'm asking the blessing of the Lord to minister and to bring forth life and life more abundantly, especially right now. And dear God, there's a great need for people to believe and to stand in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free, that we be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage and the yokes that would truly come on people's lives may many and multitude be set free to the glory to the praise and to the honor of god we pray it now in jesus name amen and we bind the devil and we loose the liberty of our lord and savior lord god almighty the one that's omnipotent the one they call omnipresent the one they call Jehovah Jireh, the one they call the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon, the I am that I am. His name is Jesus, and they call him wonderful, consular, prince of peace. What a mighty God we serve. And I share that with so many of you on today, that if he's a mighty God, then I want you to know this. The first shall be last. And the last shall be first. We have a lot of people that think it works for them. But when you think about being first, you think about being yielded to the spirit of the most high God. I call on the name of Jesus and I'm asking Christ to give somebody new life in the midst of hopelessness. I want you to know there is hope. I'm reading from St. John chapter 3, verse 16, and I love this scripture, and this, and all the way from 3, 16 through to verse 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, for God so loved the world, God is a giver that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God came that we, you and me, all of us might have life and that we might have it more abundantly seeing the stricken sickness of the world that we now live in he was a liberator because he said where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and sometimes people may know and don't know that if you're going to come into the presence of the most high god you got to come into the place called liberty i'm talking about the spirit of the lord and sometimes when you get into the spirit of God, then God's spirit begins to move miraculously, supernaturally, mightily. God is a giver and he's a forgiver and he's a giver of life. And I'm saying that to somebody today because somebody is in a great need of receiving life on today. And if you're going to get into that place called life, God gave it over 2,000 years ago when he gave his son, Christ Jesus. In St. John chapter 4, he said, Herein is love, not, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the preparation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time.
if we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfect in us. And I'm saying that to somebody today because my model, my theme, when I begin to come on, all I could think about was these words right here. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. I mean, absolutely nothing else could help. Love lifted me. See, God is a lifter. And when he lifted me, he raised me. He filled my cup. He filled it up to overflowing when he gave me love, L-O-V-E. And I thank God for his love that when he called me forth at such a time that we now live in, his love began to lift me from the guttermost to the uttermost. And because his love began to lift me, he began to sustain me in every area of my life. He began to build me up on every side. And I began to say, God, I thank you. And Lord God, I praise you for this great love. You didn't have to do it, but I am so glad that you did. When I look again in the word of the Lord, love lifted me. I'm saying that to somebody today. If you've ever been lifted, it was the love of God that lifted you. God picked me up from the bottom and raised me to the top. And the enemy got angry with me because God saw fit to redeem me, blood wash me and save me. And I'm saying that to you, beloved. Why did God do such a thing like he did when he did? Multitudes that was down in the valley low begin to look down and begin to say, why are you down there? And I'm up here, but not knowing they were in the same stage that you was in. A lot of times people seem to think more of themselves than they are. When you think more of you and you see someone that's going through, you have totally missed the mark. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But what about love? What about love? What about love? Love came and sustained me when I was at my lowest state, my lowest degree. And yet I thought I was on the mountaintop, but yet I was in the valley low. God saw fit to come and to get me and to strengthen me and to love me back to perfect health. I love 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and, and, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity boneth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. And whether there shall be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. Note that. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even also I am known. 
And now abide the faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. I give God the praise for that. Glory. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, beloved. I just know that if I'm going anywhere, I've got to do it in love. Everything must be done by L-O-V-E. Because if I know not love, I know not charity, my living is in vain. And I don't need to be in the midst of a vain show. God's spirit didn't call me to be exalted over anybody, but to be yielded to his spirit. The fulfillment of real joy is knowing the almighty God. When you talk about love these days, it's a turnoff because people know not the love, but yet the love is searching for them. Yes, you have eros, you have affiliate, but you have agape. And I'm talking about God's global, worldwide love for you and for me. Because God gave me love in a sick, dying world. God gave me love when he gave me Jesus, his only begotten son, to be a ransom payer. Because I was in bondage, I was in sin, and I was undone. But yet he became a liberator. And when he began to deliver me, he set my soul free. Now I can tell the world, do you know if it had not been for the Lord, which was on my side, I don't know where I would be. It was God that blood washed me. It was God that redeemed me. It was God that raised me up from the guttermost to his uttermost. It was God that had mercy on me when everybody walked away from me. Love lifted me. And I'm going to say that to everybody. And I pray that you get a hold of somebody because somebody need the love of God. I don't care what the devil is saying, and I definitely don't care what he's doing. Because it's up to God right now to be the judge. And I'm getting ready to tell everybody, if not somebody, here comes the judge. Jesus is soon to return. He's coming back for his love, his dove, his undefiled. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his church. She's going to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. God is coming back for people that he's raised up out of a people and do your due diligence to be ever so ready for an hour that you think not nor look for him the lord is going to return and i'm saying that to somebody today because of the spirit of god that's going to raise somebody up and i'm telling you right now it's no time to be mesmerized it's time to be saved and to put on what we better know as being is the whole armor of God. God has called you out for such a time as this to bring you in. And I'm telling you right now, come on, come on, come on, come on. And God's spirit would begin to show up and he's going to show out. The love of God has been shed abroad. For God so loved the world, seeing you and I was going to be in it. And he brought us out for the time that we're now in. Now we must love everybody. Now I don't care what color your skin is. Skin don't have nothing to do with it. But the spirit does. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. What breaks the chains, what takes the shackles off is the love of God. And I'm telling somebody right now, come on, come on, come on. Receive the love of God. Receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Let him be the I am. Let him be the Alpha and Omega. Let 